All right, well today we're gonna work on a 2002 Miata LS and we're gonna replace the top. And you can see the top's pretty worn there. It's got a hole in the screen or the windshield's about ready to fall out. Sides are all bad. It's pretty gross. The uh, other side, the driver's side, has got a hole in the roof right there. So we're gonna start taking this thing apart and put a new top on it. All right, I didn't pull the seats out. And I don't know if I'm going to. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this piece of carpet off right here. And to do that, I've got these handy dandy tools from Harbor. And you just pop these things off. And I'd already taken the other three off. And then the next thing to do is we're going to go underneath, lift the lid, go underneath. And there's, uh, I might show it or not, but there's more in the back. Uh, back in the back, back there. Oh, and by the way, I also took off the wind deflector. This piece here that goes across the back. I think you can see it. There's just a couple of screws on either end, and it comes out real easy. Well, I decided to take the front seat out because it was a real pain in the butt to get to the back. So I did that, and then I removed the uh, plastic catches that are there. Um, pretty good luck. I only had one break. Uh, I had to remove the def defroster light there, just cut one of those. Now what I discovered was I was going to take this carpeting out, but then I discovered there's a bolt right underneath this piece right here, and it looks like it's got a Torx tip on it or star bit. And, you know, I really don't need to take the carpet out because I can get to all the bolts in the back of the rain rail. So, that's kind of where we're at now. We're going to go now start taking apart the, uh, the top itself. All right, first thing we're going to take off is this front piece here. There's a couple screws up top here we're going to remove. that piece just comes off. I'm actually going to set this stuff on the front of the hood uh, so that I know where they are and which side they went on. Putting the screws back in their place. Alright, next thing is to remove this trim piece right here. You can see I'm just going to lay them out on the hood here, orient them which way they went. Lip was on the inside. Okay, now the centerpiece, uh, you, I believe you can actually leave in. So this top piece we're not going to remove here. We're going to remove this one here. Pull this out of here. Now there's also a couple of, I guess I'll probably have to change the camera here. I don't know if you can see this or not. Right at the end down here, there's a couple of those plastic keepers. I don't know what the hell they're called, but they're in there. So I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna have to pull those out. So you see that these things are down at the end down there. That's what I've got to pull out, so I'm going to pull those out now. All right, it's kind of hard to see down there, but I flip this piece up and pry down in here, pop that thing out. Okay, that's that one. I use my handy dandy harbor tool. Now this one, I'm going to go. Couldn't get the harbor one down in there, so we're gonna try the screwdriver here. Okay. 
Alright, so that's that piece. You can see it's got these two clips in it that plug back underneath there. So far I'm lucky that I'm not breaking anything and the rubber seems like it's in pretty good shape. Eh, kinda here. Not sure if this split is supposed to be there or not, but it's not looking too bad. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is get this silver clip off of it here, so let's get that one off. Got three screws just like the other one. Looks like uh, when it's put in from the factory, there's double-sided tape here that goes down and holds those in. I don't know if I'm going to duplicate that. Okay, so now we have the, this is where that clip was. And you can see, now there's two rivets right here. And the only way to get those rivets out of there is to drill them. So uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get a drill bit and drill those two rivets out. And I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to see because I might be in the way. <clears throat> but we're just going to drill these two rivets out here. I took a 532nd drill bit. I know that's a 532nd rivet in there. And that guy's off. And we'll go to the top one here. And that one's off. So that's... It's not rocket science drilling out those rivets. Alright, now that we've got the screw off, you can see I pulled back some of the... Uh, top there. There's a screw and a clip down below down there. Now some people have said to get a right angle screwdriver to get in there a little stubby. I happen to have just a, a short Phillips there and I'm going to take that screw out with that. There's not a lot of room but I think I can get it. Okay I got that screw out. And you can see now there's this is all loose right here now so we're going along pretty good here. All right, next thing I gotta do is the other side, so we don't need to see that. All right, next thing we're gonna do is remove this top rail right here, which will expose the top of the top. Get the front. It's just four screws that hold this guy on. That's it. Alright, we'll take it and flip it up now. Get it on the other side. Okay. That's loose. Here's the tension cable right there. That's actually starting to rip out of the top. But uh, uh, this is connected right here. Now I know what that strap's for on my top that I've got. I'll show you right here. There's a uh, there's a piece of webbing on my other one and I wondered what that was for so this is what this is right here this uh, this attaches there and it looks like it's just got a regular screw on it so let's you know what I'm gonna leave that on there so I remember that I'm just gonna take my knife and cut it off so I'll know what that is right there because of that maybe in fact I should have probably just cut that and, but oh well I didn't now the other thing I should show you too, because I just kind of figured this out, is the, in the rivets, let's see, I don't know if I can show you the rivets, let's see.
Yeah, you can see a rivet right there. So those didn't actually drill out. I think they were spinning. So I'm gonna try and take a drill again to that and see if I can drill that piece off. <clears throat> but if it spins, then I know I'm gonna have to I know I'm gonna have to punch that through. It did actually drill out. Okay, there we go. I am going to vacuum the car after this because there are spots. I'm gonna go do that on the other side if they're like that. The next thing we gotta deal with is we're gonna get the tensioner cord off of the top. And that's held right here. There's a screw right here that uh, holds that tensioner cord. So we're gonna take that screw out and then we'll be able to get that cord out of there. Whoa. Yowza! Had a little tension on it there. <laughs> um, so I guess I probably move that down a little bit if I did that. Everything's still intact. It's here. <laughs> that was fun. Let's open this guy up a little bit here. Blends up. Let's get this cable out of here. Now it just comes up through the top here. I'm going to try and take the spring off, but. I think I have to. Now, a word of caution, this thing may or may not be in bad shape. And uh, it's riveted on up at the top up here, right here. And we're just gonna, just gonna kind of pull this thing through the top. It goes through this hole. It's a hole right here when the top's up and it fishes down through that hole and goes behind this piece right here. So we'll see if we can pull it out here. You may just want to open let me get a pair of needle nose and we'll open that thing up, take the spring. Alright. This thing should just open up this way. We'll take the spring off. I mean, just the cable kind of lined up. There we go. Pull it back out. What the? Bring right back on. Now this, we got a little cut in the plastic here, but the cable itself looks pretty good. So hopefully I can get my money back on the ones that I that I bought. Maybe I'll leave that screen cable on. Okay, now we're gonna work on getting the top off. It's got two channels here in the OEM top, and you know what? I don't really care about this thing. So we're just going to cut it. I'm just going to cut the top right off this thing. Pull this thing out of here. Okay, now these straps, do not cut these. These straps, do not cut these. These go to a bolt down here on the rain rail. We're going to still use those, so do not, do not, do not cut those. Okay, now because I can, 
I'm just going to cut this top out of here. Start with the window, which is almost out anyway. Yeah, yeah I kept expecting it to fall off, but wasn't going to, which I guess is good. Alright. Next thing I'm going to do is cut the sides off. Remember, very, very careful, do not cut that strap. Otherwise you'll have to put another strap on there. Okay, some crap that came out of the rain rail, but that's about it. Okay, next, next step into exciting. We're going to start taking the bolts, bolts off the rain rail. Go all the way around. And I know in the instructions they give you uh, what bolts the strap goes to. This bolt goes to strap, or to hold, the, the strap goes to bolt, bolt number three. So. We'll just start taking these things off. Do as much as I can with power here. I'm not going to be able to get that one back there. off on the sides there. Let's get this final bolt off over here. pieces that go around the rain rail here. They all come off like that. And we'll just lay those as they came off on the hood. Okay, now there's a couple other riveted places, so let me show you those. 
Okay, hopefully you can see that. There's two rivets right there, and those have got to come off. So we've got them on the other side, so I'm going to get those off. And This comes to the part where I'm trying to figure out if I want to try and put the top on as it sits, or take the actual cage off and put it on that way. I'm not sure. The two rivets here are the things that are really get me thinking. Okay, next step, we got all the bolts out of there. Let's get the rain rail removed. And I thought on NAs, there's another one of those little like plugs on the bottom, but on the NB here, I do not see that. So, uh, I guess NBs don't have that. I do see it. This is not where I thought it was. Yeah, they do have it. Okay, there's a little plug. So if I, see if I can show it to you. It's actually right here where my finger's at. Another one of those plastic push plugs. So I'm going to have to get my tool to get that out of there. I thought it was down by the bolts, but there it is. Okay, just a little hint. I don't know if you can see these tools. I can't see. I have to see if I can see my picture. These tools are invaluable in taking apart this car. The uh, Use this one first, which is a straight one. Wedge that underneath that piece. And it'll pop it up a little bit. And then put this tool in. It's got the angle. And then pop it out. These are like, I don't know, four to seven bucks at Harbor Freight. And there's a set of four of them there. And they're the best things for this whole project. All right, now it's about time to take off that whole piece. Part on the back of the trunk there, that's, uh, that's that air damper that goes in the middle there. Kind of. Doesn't do anything for else other than just move the air out of the way. Definitely not stabilizing the body. So, that's it for the rain rail. Alright, just a quick update here. I decided to take the carpet out. There was only the two bolts there. It was just a Phillips, not a star. Came out real easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean up the whole back here so I can get ready for the new one. And then I can take my... Uh, rug back. I wish I could have it washed and shampooed and everything because it's dirty, but I'll, de I'll deal with it. Okay, another thing I want to mention is the uh, rain drip holes. It's this hole right here, and that can get clogged up with all kinds of crap, trees and stuff. Uh, the uh, I, You can just take a coat hanger or uh, a drain snake if it's skinny enough and just stick it down that hole and just pop it through it'll come out at the bottom of the car and all the crap that's inside of there hopefully it'll fall out. Alright I've decided I'm going to take the top off. Uh, to do that it just comes off with a couple bolts. First you gotta take this piece off. side you just we're gonna take this piece off no, darn it that one broke so like I say you know you never know with as old as the car is the plastic pieces tend to have a tendency to break and die in this uh, heat, hot heat in Arizona Next piece that comes off this little pusher here, he just pops right out. Take this strip off here. A little slack. I don't think I have to take the seat belt off, but maybe I do. 
assembly is attached right here by these bolts so we'll take these bolts out by the way I forgot to tell you the bolts on the rain rail are 10 millimeter the bolts on the floor are 14 and I'll let you know what these are once I get a bolt size on them okay so these are 14 millimeter bolts on this side The other nice thing about doing this, taking the top off, is that I can go in the house and put this together. It's air conditioned inside there. Right now working out here, we've got 91 degrees. That's a cool day for us in the summer here. So I'll get the other side out and then we'll take the top in. One thing I found out when trying to lift this thing out of here was I did have to take this piece off. And there's just a little, one of those push pins here. And then it just pops right out. Did that to the other one. Now I can lift the whole thing out. Now if you're lucky enough to have a big dining room table like me, you can do this standing up rather than having to kneel down. First thing we're going to do is get that tension cord through the top. To do that, I'm going to take a coat hanger. And you can take pretty much anything. Just feed it in over here, get it to come out the other side, and then I'll attach the cable and pull it through. Now I'm just going to make a little hook on the end here, I think, because it has that little eyelet on it. Attach it like that. Okay, it's that easy. And let me do I'll do that on the other side then. Now that is eventually going to pull through a, a hole in the top over here, right up here, and it's going to come down and attach over on this side right here once we get that pulled through. But for now, then we're going to start working on the front. And we'll get the uh, We'll get the top starting to put on the front of that part there. It looks like it's just going to kind of fit right over it. Then underneath and bend down here. And then these will attach into that screw. And then I think once we get tension on the top, it's going to, uh, it's going to hold that in. Not sure about the top here. I think I might have to tug that down. I'm not really positive what we're going to make out of that. I think we get this piece going through here. I think it'll pull it across there. So I also need that front rail, which I'll have to go out in the garage and get. And now we'll move that piece in there and start working this piece in. 
Okay, now we're just <clears throat> kind of working the piece in, putting the top piece on and pushing the rail in. Just kind of working it across. Okay, now it's going to work this piece tight. I think it's going to pull itself nice and tight once it stretches out. Okay, next thing we're going to put on is the flap that goes around the rails. And this piece gets wrapped around all three of the rails and then just gets Velcroed back up here to the front. side than the other side so we'll try one more time. The odd part is that it was on the longer side but wrap this across this way. Part's done. Okay, now that we got it folded, <coughs> folded up a little bit, what I found was this channel right here had kind of locked down, so when I was trying to close it, it wouldn't close. So, a uh, little tip this thing just kind of like closed on its closer, it closed down here. So, <laughs> I'm trying to keep my hands as clean as I can since I'm putting on a tan top. This black top probably wouldn't matter, but I don't want to get fingerprints all over the new top. So I've attached the string to the cable and I've run it through the hole. And now I'm running it back up this channel here. And it has to attach back up with this screw. So we'll see if we can get this thing back up here. Yeah, when you got it nice and loose like this, it, it'll come right up. Okay, that's on. We'll do the same thing on the other side. The next step now is to get there, get this piece attached, and <clears throat> it's going to pull up over the frame and then come down. We've got two screws 
and two pop rivets that we're going to put in place here. So if I can get pop rivets in their holes. Ribbit gun on. Okay, there's one. And the neat thing about this kit was these rivets are 530 seconds, <clears throat> which are hard to find. And since this is an NB, it doesn't need straps attached. So the straps that they gave me for to put on, if I was putting it on an NA, I don't need to, I don't need them. So it's kind of nice that I, I got eight rivets. I don't have to go looking for some 532nd rivets. Already got them here. Why are you doing that to me. Okay. So those are on. So now I just gotta go get the trim piece and put that on. A couple pieces that need to go on here. There's a, a little clip. There's this clip here. And it's gotta go down to hold this down. And then also there's this back piece it's got to go back here and let's pull that out a little bit so we can see that it's got to get riveted right back here so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do now is rivet those pieces and then we'll put that clip on so this is what I kind of figured out okay what I did was I took this piece and I put the rivets in the holes <clears throat> and then I took the clip and put my awl in one of the holes where one of those plastic pieces go for the rubber piece that we're going to put on and then I was able to screw that clip down. It's kind of a pain but now we can go ahead and put these in here and uh, get those rivets in place. We've got everything on there except for putting our trim pieces on, which that's the next step. Which we're going to take these and put this in place. So this is held down with three screws. Just going to leave them loose until I can get all three of them in there. Always helps to have that awe there. You can make sure you're centered on your holes.
Okay, now that we got the sides, everything all buttoned up, I'll put these trim pieces on uh, once I get it back in the car. But uh, I'd say we're ready to go. We'll lift it and put it back on the car. And Okay, now I got the top back on. I did have a little help with that. It made it a lot easier with two people. Uh, and I think what I'm going to start to do now is put the uh, put the bolts back inside, you know, to hold the top on here. Um, but I was able to take off almost everything, you know, with it attached. And then we'll start getting those rain rail bolts in there, which is probably going to be a big pain. Okay, really all I'm doing now is just putting the trim pieces back together. Uh, before I get the top down. I know I have these two screws here that I took out with the carpeting and I've been debating about putting the carpeting in but I thought I better put all this stuff back together first um, and then I can figure out if I want to do that uh, which I think I probably will so in trying to clean these things they're like really really dirty You don't clean the inside of a car at all. At least not this way. By taking it apart. Like I say I've been trying to keep my hands clean too, working with tan. It'd be much easier if it was a black interior. <laughs> you probably wouldn't even see any fingerprints on anything. I see I get some of the marks on stuff, so but anyway. Just trying to kind of get this stuff put put back in, and then uh, that way, then I can start working on the rain rail and get that in. And it's kind of easy to put all this stuff back in when you pretty much have it all apart like this. Makes it a little bit easier to get everything in. that and there's a little push pin you got to put in it and one of these guys a hole Get one on the other side and Got the piece of molding here to put in. And then I'll put this other part on it once I get the rain rail and everything put in place. Yeah, I think I decided to put the carpet in first. So I took it in the house and I vacuumed it and everything. Try to get it as clean as I could. I think it might be easy to put it in this way. I just lift it up underneath the window and kind of slide it down in there. It doesn't really mess with anything. I can pull it back for the rain rail, so I don't think that'll be a problem. At least this way I can get. Uh, Get it put in and I get those screws put in. Now you want to remember to make sure you pull up your defroster window and center it on that hole for the big these big bolts. Put that back in there.
we'll see if it was if it's a pain or not put the rain rail in. But I thought it'd be easier to get those bolts in. Like I say, make sure you have this out. You're looking for your strap. This strap here is going to go on the number three bolt. So I know we're going to have to play with this top and like move it back so we actually have some some room to move. So we'll have to figure out how to do that. But uh, get your carpet. Just kind of move that up out of the way. Get the rain rail back in here. And the first thing we're going to put on is going to be that little plastic cap that goes in there. We hope it won't be too many problems. Now the other thing you got to remember is underneath the rain rail here there's a little lip. Or I should say underneath this trim right here there's a little lip. And there's a piece of, piece of the uh, uh, rubber and your rain rail has to go behind that so that it can catch the water. So very important that, uh, that you get that in that way um, so that it's underneath that lip. And then that way when the rain comes down, it goes into that rain rail and then it goes down into that drain. So. The first thing I want to do is get this clip on, and we're going to put the clip on both of those sides. And then once we get once we get that on, then uh, then we're a go. Well, I might have to track this thing down so I can get it on here. Being a real turd doesn't want to go in. The hole's not there. All right. Okay, so I got the two side pieces on. They were kind of a pain. Uh, those two little plugs. Now, now is a matter of getting the rain reel going. Making sure, like I say, it's underneath that lip. There's a rubber lip you'll feel. Make sure it's underneath there. And uh, you're going to have to now work it all the way across. I guess to do that, I'm probably going to have to go back in the inside of the car and uh, start working from there. So I'll just kind of give you progress or how I did it uh, once I get that done. Okay, I thought I'd give you a little update. I have removed all of the seats because it's harder than heck to work inside this car. Now, I had to call my wife to give me a hand here, but what we did was, I'll tell you, this rail was a pain in the rear. Um, you see the bolts back there. I haven't attached that yet, and I also haven't attached the strap yet that I think goes to position three in this car, although I think that's where it went when I originally pulled it off. Um, what I actually did was I started on the right side over here, or to my right now, past the driver's side, and I worked all the way across. I started with the bolt there because there's those are two pieces right there. And uh, I... Uh, I started with that first bolt and then I slowly went around putting all of the different bolts on and that seemed to be the only way to do it. Uh, trying to get that one on the center was absolutely impossible. 
Uh, I don't know how in the hell they would even do it. But uh, anyway, so that's my progress. I've got two more bolts to go, uh, both on the side rails, the very first bolts that are right behind here. So that's kind of where I'm at, and I'm uh, getting pretty close to being done. All right, I don't know if you can see everything, but the defroster uh, is hooked up. What I'm kind of bummed about is there's no, there was a channel in the other one that held it like that. But I've got all the, all the little things back in place. Whatever you call those things. Carpet hold downs. They're all done, so now I just gotta get the rest of the trim up here taken care of and we'll be all done. Let me give you a lesson to learn here. <laughs> um, this strip, which goes on this piece here, has got those two little pieces that, you know, these little catches like you have on the other ones that go there. Well, it's a real pain in the butt to put these things in right now with the way that I have the window because I should have put them on when I had the window in the house. Uh, probably would have made it a lot easier. So, lessons learned, it's hard to get into that little spot there to put these pieces. These are the pieces that go in there and they go in the bottom. If you remember when we took those off, these pieces were in there. So, lessons learned. Alright, she's all done. Put back together. And, uh, that's about it. I'm pretty much done for the day. I haven't stretched it yet. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I guess it's pretty good. I, I got everything back together except this one bolt. And I have no idea where in the hell I took it from. But anyway, I guess that's par for the course. So, flip it up. Going to have to be a little bit stretched there. But I'll work on that tomorrow. I'll put it out in the sun, let it get nice and hot. And then, uh, then I'll stretch it closed. But anyway, it looks pretty good. All right, the last part of the project is to put these straps back on. You see, here's the strap there. And you see, it's got a screw. Well, that screw was like almost like rusted in there. Um, and you get this dimension for the strap off of your old strap when you take your top off you cut I just left my screw in there and then just cut it off at the top uh, Right here by the seam and then that way I was able to get my length and then cut this tape, you know, it's it's the uh, You know, it's like a plastic tape uh, Webbing the plastic webbing so when you cut it you always want to make sure that you take a match and burn the ends and that'll stop it from fraying now this one worked out great, kind of great. I was afraid I was going to strip the screw, but I didn't, and it did finally come out. But the other side, I had an issue with that. Um, I couldn't, uh, this one here, I ended up riveting it in because the screw would not come out of the hole. So I came around back and drilled in from the back, and then, uh, just put some rivets on it to uh, hold it in. Um, I think that'll be fine. I mean, you, if you don't like it, you know, you can always drill it out so it's not that big of a deal. But I just put a little 1 8 inch rivet in that. And that was about it. So now we got to go to the stretching part. Next step we got to do is just put the air, sheet, air deflector, whatever you want to call it, back in. It's just held in with four screws. Pops in here like so. Here's although mine only has three screws, and I don't know why. I'm guessing somebody took it off and didn't put it on right. until I get all the screws in the holes and that way if I have to mess around with it I can. I 
I'll try and put this other one in, but it's a little boogered up. I don't know what happened to it. I guess if somebody took it out and they didn't put it in right, but not want to go in. So we'll just tighten these two down. stripped out I'm gonna have to find another one now I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this or not but these are the clips for the you know where you clip your uh, top up to the roof uh, to the front part there's a little piece of black plastic just pull this up and this is actually the adjusting part of it right here it, it's like a, it's a bolt in a sense and if you you can unscrew that so that it's as wide as it can get and then eventually you can keep tightening it down once it's in. So I'm going to take that out to its, as far as I can extend it forward, meaning moving this piece forward up and then we'll try and pop it in there and see if we can't get it to go and I'm going to do the same to the other side. Alright, we'll try and start to uh, see if we can get this thing closed. I've extended out both sides. If we can get it closed, then we're in good shape. We'll let it stretch itself on out and being pretty much done. Good. So I guess that's a wrap.